G'day and welcome again to the Vintage Time Australia channel and in today's video I'm going to tear down a Seiko 7548 quartz movement and we're going to see why these little movements are actually so cool. So um, I guess to, to preface this video, um, these movements are basically the same footprint as the um, 6309. So, You'll actually see when we get inside, basically all they did was to replace the train side of the movement with on the 6309 with quartz stuff. And the calendar is basically identical, so you can swap parts between each one. Now, for years, they uh, the, some people were swapping... Uh, if they had a 6309 movement fail, they would swap in one of these. But uh, the only catch with that is, is that the dial feet, uh, I think, we'll, we'll actually double check that. I think they're in slightly different positions, but we'll uh, we'll confirm that uh, shortly when I do a comparison between each movement. So, just taking off the C ring there, and they've got a slightly different C ring, which is a little bit more difficult to poke around with. So there you've got the calendar, <coughs> excuse me, the calendar, and you'll see the calendar plate they've used is just the same one from the 6309, and you know it's got holes there for the uh, the balance uh, balance jewel, which would normally sit there, and the barrel arbor would be over here. So. <clears throat> anyway, what I might do is I'll just grab a 6309 movement and we can compare it. There we go. So, if we just look at the calendar side there, you can actually see the similarities. And I'll just zoom this uh, out actually. So, you can see there calendar wheel in the same place um, basically identical in every way and all those parts swap over which is a really cool thing about these as well so they're actually quite clever when they design this because they reduce the amount of parts that they need to develop for the new movement and also the amount of parts that they um, sort of had floating around in uh, warehouses and stuff like that so that really is was in my opinion a, a stroke of genius when designing this movement and overall most people really like this movement for these sorts of reasons just because it was quite smart in the way they the way they designed it and we're just going to start taking the calendar plates off there now you'll notice that I'm uh, using brass tweezers this time and the reason for that is that if you use steel tweezers I've actually dropped that screw somewhere but um, we'll find that a little bit later so the reason being if you use steel screwdrivers even stainless steel screwdrivers they will become magnetized so you have to use non ferric uh, sorry not screwdrivers um, uh, tweezers so you've got to use non ferric tweezers and that is the way to go with these because you just need to touch one part and your tweezers are magnetized so I've got uh, titanium and brass tweezers although I have no idea where I put my titanium tweezers so I'm going to use the brass ones today and we'll just get that plate off so no real surprises there except normally we'd see uh, the uh, the bottom balance jewel and some other stuff there and there's that screw so just I think it's in there somewhere but um, anyway the um, what was I saying yeah so As I was saying, they're, they're basically identical um, there with the 6309. 
So all of those parts will swap over, the setting lever will swap over, all those bits will swap over, all of that will as well, literally everything. So that really is fantastic. And we'll just um, take the click away there. Um, yeah, so I, I can't actually see what I'm doing really that well at the moment. So if I'm fumbling a bit, that will be why. And this just is not working for me. I'm just going to put my glasses on just one sec. Right. Um, I'm really having difficulty getting that click off for some reason. Normally these just come straight off, but what we'll do is we'll just get the edge of a screwdriver under it. And it really does not want to come off. Okay, I think we've finally got it now. So that's probably sticky with some oil or something, which is making it difficult to get off. It's actually really crazy. If you've got um, thick oil around the pivot on this, it can almost create a vacuum. And what just happened then happens. So you'll eventually get the part loose and try to pull it off and it will shoot off. And until then it will be incredibly difficult to remove. So I was told that the way to avoid getting that um, vacuum effect on the parts is to spread when you're oiling the pivot. And I don't, I don't actually oil the pivots on the click anymore. Um, reason being, I've, I've had a few do exactly this. So I've had a few that have got uh, quite firm and um, the click has been has not well the click lever hasn't really been able to move much and it causes a very firm click which has caused the watch to stop so since I had a few issues with that a bit back I've um, actually stopped oiling the pivots on the click and which is just that little post there and to be quite honest it doesn't really need it so I'd rather not do that and reduce the risk of something going wrong rather than trying to do it and then I have something go back to a customer and it comes back in a few weeks because the watch has decided to stop running. So we don't really want that kind of scenario. So you can see there um, identical to a 6309 so we're just going to pull the cannon pinion off and that's the combination setting lever there my opinion is this is a work of art I mean just look at that that is one complex part if you have a look on the side there you can see it's made up from several pieces and um, yeah, quite, quite complex. So if I can actually get it in focus, um, you can see it there. So they really did well to make such a complex part at what at the time was a relatively low cost. So if you compare that with uh, some of the Swiss movements of the time, uh, it's a much more elegant solution to the problem of uh, quickset. Uh, day date that's for sure so we've just about stripped everything off of here um, got a few bits left the uh, brass tweezers are a little bit more a little bit difficult to work with so it's not something I'd like using uh, constantly it's sometimes hard to gauge the feeling that you have uh, picking up parts with the brass tweezers just because they're so much more flexible than the stainless steel tweezers. So sometimes um, you can uh, use the stainless steel tweezers and then just demagnetize them uh, a few times while doing the disassembly. 
The uh, problem that I have doing that right now is that my demagnetizer actually blew up. So it caught fire and um, it, uh, yeah, it, it was just not good. I could, couldn't recover it. Um, it was all melted and didn't smell very good at all. Um, the problem with that is, is that the, I can't buy, buy them locally. Uh, no one in Adelaide stocks them and they were low on stock interstate as well. Unfortunately, it's just one of those things that you sort of buy once every 10 years or something, so they just don't keep stock. All right, so that's the calendar side all stripped now, and you can see the coil and a battery connection on the other end. Uh, hang on, we've just got two more bits to get off there. Uh, again, they're exactly the same as the 6309. So I'm just going to flip it over now and we're going to go to, if it was a 6309, what would be the uh, train side. And you'll, this is where the majority of the differences come in. So I'm just uh, securing that in the movement holder now. Uh, there we go. So that is the train side of the movement. So there we have uh, a large battery strap, which is across there. You've got the, uh, the uh, gear train there. Now that little plate there actually just says which movement it is. And you can see there, actually I can't read it myself, so it's 7548A. Now as far as I'm aware they never made a B variant, but I guess they thought that they might one day. Now that little plate you can actually just lever off if you want and change it with other plates, but uh, we're not going to bother doing any of that. So if we compare that now with the 6309 train or side, and just bear in mind that this is a terrible movement, it's been full of seawater. Oh, excuse me, I'm just hiccuping. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, it's been uh, full of seawater. And we're just going to totally line it up where the stuff is respectively. So basically where the barrel was on the 6309, that's where they put the battery. And the balance would have been over here uh, if it had a balance. So you can see they've literally just ground off one side of one of these plates and then put the quartz stuff on top so it'd be interesting if someone ever turned up the prototypes for the, for this movement just to see how they actually did it but I would say it would be something like that now while we have got this here I'm just going to experiment with dropping the dial on just to see if the feet line up in the right place so I can't remember which one it is whether it's these this one or the um, <clears throat> or if it's the 7C46. I know the 7C46 definitely has feet in different locations. So if you do want to put one of those movements on, you actually need to cut the feet off, which is undesirable. That is the dial feet. So if we just drop this on here, um, yeah, I've gone off, so I've just gone off camera there a bit. So, the answer is when I actually work out which way we're trying to go. There we go. So it actually is just a total swap for that. So you can swap the 7548 dials between 6309s. And you can see it's that's one dial foot. Where is it? There, there's one there. And another one over here. So they're a total swap. So say, for example, you've got a 6309 and you wanted to put one of these quartz movements in there because you're sick of uh, it not being wound up. You could easily do that. You could do it with a 7546 as well, which is basically the same. I mean, they had, I think from memory, a slightly different, like one less jewel or something like that. And uh, 
they don't have the large battery strap but they're otherwise identical so you could do that if you really wanted to and I remember years and years ago when I first got into this that's what a lot of people used to do so their 6309 would die and rather than spending a few hundred bucks getting it serviced they uh, they just put a 7548 or 7546 movement in now on these the screws that go in the battery strap tend to shoot up as soon as you loosen them off so I'm just going to do this under plastic because of course they're a special screw and one of the things one of the main things that's missing on these movements is always these special screws now luckily I can still source them but um, that said I don't like losing them so we've just um, cocked that up now without losing anything and I like to do the back one because then you can just pull that away like that now the other thing that these are supposed to have is there's supposed to be a little spacer there which is missing on this or is it? No, it's, oh it's actually there uh, yep yep so there's a little spacer here I think someone's actually made this one, yeah, someone's made that one, but that doesn't really matter. So there's a little spacer there, and what that does is that um, that just helps to reduce the amount of uh, shooting that the strap does um, when you undo that screw. And the way it does that is because it sits a bit higher, it's got less preload on it. So we'll just get that battery out of the way. Now with these it's really important to use um, the silver ion batteries. Don't use anything else but silver ion batteries in these. Otherwise they do leak and as soon as they've leaked you're going to fry the movement. So this is what we like to see. It's really clean in there. There's no acid or anything like that which is an ideal scenario for these. And uh, these movements, I think uh, I probably mentioned it just before, they really are a work of art. They're absolutely bulletproof. And when the world's come to an end, there's going to be these movements, Camrys and cockroaches running around. Now, we'll see how they achieve that as well, uh, just by taking the uh, plastic module off. Now, these very rarely go wrong. Um, they do. And it's sometimes, and it's usually due to acid. And what happens when we take it off and we flip it over is I'm just going to put those screws aside so I don't lose them. So if we look at the back there, you can see the integrated circuit that does all the uh, quartz timing and all that sort of stuff. So what will happen? usually is acid will get on these contacts here and it will wick into the IC and once it's wicked into the IC it's game over for the IC it will just eat the thing from the inside so that's why it's important to use good batteries um, I recommend Panasonic the Seiko branded batteries uh, say Zyken, which is another Seiko sub-brand uh, Maxell are good as well uh, I don't like Everettis, they leak. I uh, don't like Varta, they leak. And any no-name battery that you buy from a, a dollar store or anything, just don't even think about putting it in here. You will kill the watch. So we can see all the um, bits and pieces on there. So the circuit's actually just made by bits of brass that are plastic welded onto the module, which is a very durable uh, way of doing it. it. It truly is genius. Up here you'll see the trimmer, so with the trimmer you can actually change the uh, daily uh, gain or loss rate on the movement. And right there you'll see the oscillator. So the oscillator is uh, inside that uh, aluminium can, there's a little uh, uh, crystal tuning fork which generates the oscillations. That guy there divides the oscillations, there's an algorithm you can look up on the internet, I'm not going to go into it right now. Uh, and then it says uh, it works out how to send uh, a pulse, a voltage through the coil, which is there. 
and when that coil gets a voltage it moves a little rotor in here which is just in there and that's what causes it to tick once a second so that really is the uh, the idiot explanation as to how it works so we've nearly stripped this movement down now I'm just going to take the coil off now now usually when these are damaged it's a coil issue and that's because someone has taken or well, replaced the battery they've slipped with the screwdriver and you'll see here now this is the only bad thing about this movement so they've undone that screw there they've slipped with the screwdriver and gone straight across the coil and scratched it and it uh, rips one of the uh, copper wires off and it's game over for the coil now sometimes you can fix them just by um, putting a blob of solder over the brake um, that works about 75% of the time if it's really bad then even the solder won't save it and you'll have to get another coil so that's what we've got left so there's like a fingerprint or something on the bottom I don't know what that is we'll get that washed off and this thing here which we'll see in a sec that is actually the uh, hacking lever so if we just grab the stem actually I haven't got the stem here right now oh no I've got part of it um, there we go so if we just stick that in you'll see how the hacking lever works so so if we push that in so that's in this state the stem would be uh, well the whole crown would be screwed down and you have no stopping from the hacking lever then you pull the crown to setting position and the hacking lever stops the movement from running so it's a very simple system of hacking <clears throat> which allows you obviously to accurately set the seconds so now we're just going to pull the top train plate off and you'll see what's left these movements are so incredibly simple they're actually a really good movement to learn watchmaking on as well uh, a lot of people will probably criticize me for that statement but just because of how durable they are how difficult it is they are to stuff up and how cheap they are to get parts for if you break something it, uh, it really is good and there's like hardly any screws as well which is another good thing uh, especially when you're trying to film a video and you're dropping screws everywhere so I'm just that's the other screw there <clears throat> so I'm just gonna get that plate off now now these can be a little bit sticky sometimes and I'm just trying to do this in a way that the fourth wheel stays down so we now have removed that plate and you'll see the gear train and the gear train is basically the same as another mechanical watch so you've got your that's basically uh, yeah that's basically if you if you to translate it into mechanical watch terms there's your balance that's actually the rotor you've got an escape wheel you've got a fourth wheel and a third wheel so incredibly simple And you can see why my statement about these being a good watch to mess around learning watchmaking for a, someone who just wants to do it casually uh, is a good suggestion. Now, this thing here, that's the hack, you can see the hacking lever there. That's it there. So, this is just a little bit fiddly. I might actually just take the rotor out first. So, that is a tiny magnet attached to a gear. <coughs> And when the uh, when the coil gets a pulse, that's what it moves. So, um, oops. Now, we're just trying to get that uh, third wheel off. Okay, that's right. You have to pull this off first. So, just this little uh, nylon hacking arm. I'm just going to take that off. Okay and then we can take off that third wheel 
then you've just got a all you've really got left is you've got the stator which is that part there and the center wheel bridge So this is a little these are often a little bit sticky as well. I'm just gonna lever it up slightly just with a screwdriver. Only very gently because we don't want to bend it. And of course that's just loosened that off. And now I'm gonna take off the hacking lever, which uh, for what it does it's absurdly large. That's it there. Now that little bridge should come off. And we've just left with the center wheel, which will just come straight off. And uh, just the stator as well, which just due to the, the shape of it is a little bit fiddly to get off. You often have to wiggle it a bit. And then we have a bare plate. So some people like to jewel the middle there. And if you've got an old 6309 plate, you can press out the center jewel from that and very, very gently press it into there. Now these were bushed. You can see the bush there. So if you're going to do that, then um, just cut very carefully and just be very gentle because if you push it too far you'll push the bush out as well and you'll just end up with a mess so that's one thing you can do with these um, most of them it's not worth it that's just fine but sometimes on some of them they've been uh, they haven't really been serviced uh, often enough and they've got an oval hole here in which case you probably will want to jewel it all right so I'll finish that up there. Um, thanks for watching and you'll see there that's one of my uh, 6170 movement holders. So that's the uh, right movement holder for this movement. As they're the same footprint as the 6309 it just drops in there. Uh, they can be a little bit tight in these holders just because the actual movement itself is it's really weird. Um, I found making these movement holders that the tolerances on these movements actually on the outside dimension can vary anywhere up to 0.15 to 0.2 mil so when you're trying to make a precision instrument like this with a light press fit um, sometimes it can really blow you out of the water um, if you do find these too tight what you can do is just get um, a little bit of I'll just take the plate out um, if you do find them too tight, usually the way to go is just to lightly, uh, I've got some here actually, just get some um, abrasive paper. You just lightly run it along in there. And just take off any burrs or anything like that. And that will make them a little bit easier to use. Uh, normally before I dispatch them, I test fit in a, six, a 6119 plate. But if you want it a little bit looser, they're pretty easy to adjust. Um, I kind of design them so they're a light, light press fit. And uh, then if you want to loosen it up or keep it quite tight, that's up to you. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching and look out for some more videos soon. Uh, I've got some more stuff to do. And uh, yeah, we'll see you back here again sometime soon.